Hey, what's up guys? We're back again with the three top tips from the best players in the world to skyrocket your mega draft win rate. First, pay close attention as possible to the board as it's being populated to identify major missing counters to cards. For instance, if there's no spells that fully counter Goblin Barrel besides arrows and you pick arrows, your opponent probably won't want to pick up Goblin Barrel since you have the arrows to counter it. So you can pick up Goblin Barrel later and your opponent will have no small spell to eliminate the Goblin Barrel, giving you a massive matchup advantage. Number two, draft your win condition as late as possible, especially if there's hard Card counters on the board that you can't get. Draft key spells and support cards early. Miner and Poison are two of the best cards to pick up early. They work in every deck, and Miner gives a way to win, getting directly on tower, while Poison hits air and ground, and deals some of the highest damage for its elixir cost to both units and towers. Drafting key spell and support cards early allows you to draft in any direction to counter your opponent. For instance, if you see your opponent pick Mega Knight and you haven't chosen your win condition yet, you have space in your deck to adapt, pick P.E.K.K.A. and win. I asked the best player in Clash Royale, the world champion Mohammed Light, what the best cards were in Mega Draft. He told me that Tornado, Magic Archer, Monk, and Fisherman, along with Miner and Poison, are all S-tier cards worthy of being picked first in most draft choices. So if you have first pick or you're picking early, pick those cards instead of choosing a win condition. Number three, most cards require synergy. You can't make an Elixir Golem deck without Battle Healer or a good Grave deck without poison or a combo of freeze plus arrows. Don't just pick a card that you like because the card is there. Pick it because of a strong synergy with your cards, an advantageous matchup against your opponent's cards, or because it's a safe pick like Miner or Monk that works with and against almost all cards in the game. So let's put all the top players' advice into action, jump into some draft games, and assert dominance. Lots of love to everyone that's using Creator Code Sir Tag to make all the daily videos possible. All right, let's get it. So first things first, we're first pick. There's only one good big spell in this entire arsenal of cards you can pick. So we are definitely going to go and stag the poison. What is he going to choose? Earthquake? That's not going to do very well unless you're going to run like maybe a Royal Giant or Hog Rider deck. And there's only Hog Rider available. So if I was him, I would probably run Hog Rider Earthquake and that would be what I would choose. But I don't want to pick Mortar and I do not want to go and pick Spear Goblin Hut. So I'm going to go and choose Fast Cycle cards because they're always very valuable. I think after he chooses double small spells, he can't fit Snowball in his deck. I will pick Snowball up later, since it's going to be incredibly valuable for me in the later stages. Yeah, it just looks like he's running Hog Rider Earthquake. So what are cards that are difficult for him to deal with? I think guards are fantastic here. He's not going to choose Miner plus Earthquake, right? No one does that. You would never steal my Miner here. I can save that for the later stretch. And I have Prince. Interesting. That was a card that I was going to snag. I think Cannon Cart is really good here. Goblin Barrel will be terrible into someone that's got Royal Delivery and Log. So Mini P.E.K.K.A. and then also Prince are pretty good at catching Miners. I still think that Miner is going to be our best win condition, so I will pick it up right now. I don't want to go and drop anything else. I mean, I guess Minions could work pretty well. Bomber for a faster card cycle is pretty good. I mean, he could choose Lightning as well. I kind of forgot that Lightning was there. It's sometimes when the cards are spread out, you don't get to see them all. I thought all the big spells were right next to each other. So I was like, oh, yeah, Earthquake, you know, Graveyard, and then also Poison all lined up. Yeah, the small spells are kind of close to each other too with the Snowball and then the Log. I don't know. I wish they ordered it with the spells next to each other. So it would be easier to find. What do we want? I think I'm going to go and choose Princess. It's a really good card for stacking up a lot. And then just making your opponent really annoyed with you. I think probably Snowball would be good here. He's going to choose Earthquake for sure. So I want to choose Inferno Tower. Inferno Tower is really good at killing Royal Giant, even if he Earthquakes, because it doesn't really matter how much HP it's at. It will still do its job. I can use Snowball to slow things down, and he chooses Earthquake as expected. I knew he was going to do that. It would have been funny if I chose Earthquake, but then he would have had Lightning as well, and Earthquake doesn't really do anything for me, so it wouldn't make sense for me to choose. Can I choose Mighty Miner or can I choose... You know what? I think that Golden Knight would be infinitely better in this situation because it's going to dash onto Rascals. It'll stop the Prince's Charge. And it's a great card with Miner in general. So yeah, we're going to go roll with this deck and see what we can do. I don't think that Snowball was going to give me that much utility there because it doesn't kill Rascals. There weren't too many cards that get affected by it. Like the Prince and the Rail Giant, they don't get pushed back by the Snowball. So I was like, ah, you know, that's why it's really important to switch and choose the cards last if you're not really sure if you need them in your deck. Like the Snowball, it was nice to have in the deck for sure as a starting card if there were no other small spells in the deck pool, but he wasn't gonna choose it, right? Because he already had so many other small spells. It gave me the option of having that flexibility. This guy is gonna go in for a mini P.E.K.K.A. and then Royal Delivery here. So I kind of want to go for an Ice Spirit to go and pull back the mini P.E.K.K.A. so it doesn't get a hit on my tower. Fantastic stuff for us. Wait, does the Princess get hit? Oh no, Princess, you are not in the best spot. You made me drop guards and I'll never forgive you. 
But yeah, my princess should have been dropped one tile lower. Totally fine for us, though. It's all good. Rascals after the buff are ridiculously good. I need to go for a bomber here so then the girl Rascal hits the bomber, hopefully. And then we can finish off also the thick boy as well and not take too much damage here at all. Just not keen on eating damage against someone that's got RG. I'm gonna go and cycle my Golden Knight in the back and see if I had Snowball here, it'd be way worse for me. Now I can just go and drop the One Elixir ability and say hello to Value and say goodbye to the Princess Charge. He's gonna go in for a log. Okay. If I go Miner here with the Golden Knight and then I go Guards on the other side and you don't have a log, how are you expecting to defend these Guards? They should go directly towards the tower. If I'm not super unlucky. Yeah, look at the damage. Yo, the guards need to change their name. They're definitely not guarding anymore. They are devouring the tower. And the bomber splash damage. See, for two elixir, this is why you want cheap cards in your deck in flexible positions where if you don't necessarily have that much elixir to defend and you took an opportunity to go all in on your opponent, you know, you would be screwed if you had five elixir cost cards there. But for two elixir, we were able to yeet and delete a mini packet and electro wizard for eight elixir there. Two for eight is a pretty good trade. We ate up everything from him. So I can go in for another Golden Knight just to go and protect our princess. And then, as I said before, Inferno Tower is fantastic against Royal Giant. Even if he Earthquakes, he's going to lose the Royal Giant for no value whatsoever. Pretty important to realize that. He's going to Earthquake and watch. It's just dead. The Royal Giant just dies. And that's crazy because he ended up dropping so much Elixir with the Royal Giant as a win condition already. You would expect him to get something out of it. But then he dropped Earthquake on top of it. He just got a huge steaming pile of nothing. I'm going to go in for a miner here because obviously the Golden Knight is going to be able to stop the majority of his spam. He's going to Rail Giant again. We're always going to go in for our guards here so the mini packet doesn't endeavor closer to our tower, but I was waiting in case we wanted to go pre-log. He did log a little bit later and he whiffed the guards. That's so good. Okay, another reason that I like Princess is it is such a good card. Just like Magic Archer is an alternative win condition. Not only are they good on defense, but notice how the Princess is able to protect the river and to just do so much damage to the tower. Like it's forcing out a Rail Delivery. Not a card he wanted to drop there. I'm going to go and click the Golden Knight Dash if I can in time, and it didn't come down fast enough. A little bit unfortunate for us, but it is what it is. I think I definitely outdrafted my dude here in this type of game mode, right? Like, every card that I picked has a purpose, where his Royal Giant's just sitting there as a win condition and being like, yeah, you know, I really wish I chose Miner as a priority pick, because guess what? Miner can actually get onto Tower, and that Royal Giant, it's doing nothing, man. <laughs> Really fun stuff for us. I can go in for guards here to guarantee that he loses to Royal Giant. Even if he decides to go in for an Earthquake plus Log, it's never going to do too much damage. You can go in for an inside Miner placement to always switch it up. And if you drop something to counter the Miner, then the Golden Knight will lock onto the tower, right? Oh! Golden Knight after the nerf is very noticeable. Wow, I did not expect that. That's kind of crazy. But you know what's crazy? The Bomber splash damage. 98 HP, and that is poison finishing range. GG and well played to him. There wasn't much he could do. Even with the Rail Giant on my tower, he only did like a thousand damage. Ridiculously easy win that was perfectly set up by our draft. It shows you the power of drafting correctly because it makes the rest of the game smooth sailing. While our opponent was wailing, crying because his win condition did nothing. All right, so it looks like our opponent has the first pick. Still gonna look at the board and see what we can choose here. I ideally want Poison and Miner if I can. And he is gonna have Tornado here. So I don't think that Hog Rider is gonna be a good choice for us at all. He's gonna choose Lightning, so I can't choose Archer Queen. That would be devastation for me. I wonder if Mega Knight plus Miner would be a good card combination because there's Wall Breakers available. Wall Breakers are one of the best win conditions in the game in this type of game mode because if you split it up, it's really hard for draft cards to be able to deal with that. Unless they have a building, which is always going to be a negative trade for them as well. I'm going to choose Miner and Poison as my two first cards. I can also choose Ice Spirit and a lot of good supporting cards. We'll see what this man's going to choose. I expect him to pick Archer Queen since he has Lightning, so that seems like his choice. If I choose Mega Knight, are there any good counters in the entire deck composition for this? No, there are not any good counters to Mega Knight besides maybe a Golem. You know what? I do want to choose Mega Knight, and if you choose Golem, then I can maybe go and pick like a Mega Knight Inferno Tower deck, as dumb as that may seem. But yeah, I think that Mega Knight is not that bad for me. So I'm going to choose Ice Spirit here, and then I think I want to choose Prince as well, since Mega Knight does fairly well with Prince. And it also gives me some firepower if he ever chooses the avenue of exploring Golem. Golem is the only way that I would lose this type of situation. So... He's going to go for Sparky. Not very scary for me at all. I'm going to go and choose Phoenix since I'm able to disintegrate that from the air. And we'll see what he picks. I mean, I'm, I'm psyched for it. I'm here for it. Wall Breakers are going to be a fantastic win condition for me. So I'm going to go and choose a Mega Knight early. So he, then he's stuck with like some weird tank like Golem in front of it. Or maybe Elixir Golem, which will get shredded by our Mega Knight. I'm just stoked to figure out what my opponent's going to do. 
So, what you gonna pick, my man? I also want them to decrease the time waiting for the opponent, because I think that pick should be fast. Like 10 seconds, not 15 in my opinion. You guys can let me know down below in the comment section what you would choose or change about Mega Draft. I would also have the card levels structured at level 11 for everyone, for all cards. Because then, you know, you're able to use every strategy then. That would be my other big choice that I would change. So, he is picking Goblin Cage, Hog Rider with Sparky. So, obviously a fantastic card composition for us to play into. I am going to go and pick probably uh, Royal Delivery. So, then I'm able to stop the Sparky and then just have some type of nice reset. And then lastly, I'm going to go and pick our Wall Breakers. So I think I have a fantastic avenue to explore on defense with Mega Knight for his Hog Rider, Prince for his Hog Rider plus Ice Spirit, and then Miner plus Wall Breakers for a really cheap and efficient win condition that aren't very counterable by anyone. So we'll see what happens. Wall Breakers at the start and the middle is always the best play no matter what you're doing. Wall Breakers will give you a positive Elixir trade. So he's going to go for Heal Spirit and Tornado. That's already four Elixir for two. That's what we love to do. So because he used his Tornado, I can Miner in the back and then use my Ice Spirit since he can't activate King Tower right now. I think the Bandit is going to go and dash backward, but it's not that bad for us. Also, if you guys didn't know, Miner did get a nerf, but it's still a fantastic card. I think that Goblin Drill in some situations will be slightly better for sure, but I wouldn't ever say that it's a bad card anymore. So I'm going to go in for a Prince in the back on the other side, and we'll see what he decides to do. I mean, he could use a Hog Rider to go and kite the Prince into a Sparky. But it's going to be harder for him to do that. And then I can set up a really solid defense with either a Mega Knight if he decides to go for a Hog Rider in front. Or I can Royal Delivery. Or maybe the Phoenix can just kill everything. Oh my gosh, Phoenix. I did not realize how broken you were. I appreciate it though. So I'm going to go and split my Wall Breakers again. We're probably going to get a huge positive Elixir trade. And let's go. We're getting the Archer Queen out of him. This is fantastic. Because <laughs> I can just Mega Knight on everything right now. Especially with an Ice Spirit. Oh my gosh, that Hog Rider is stunned for life. you got to love it, man. So we should be able to kill the Archer Queen even if he's going to go invisible. It's going to go invisible again in a different type of way. And I think the Mega Knight is going to go and slay the Archer Queen. And then we can go in for maybe a poison depending on what he drops here. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go for Prince directly on top of the Bandit. Seems like as we push up a little bit further in the Mega Draft ranked mode, we're going to start playing against better people. Like this guy's mechanics are definitely good. Despite us out drafting him pretty significantly. Do we go in for wall breakers after he drops his building? I think that's going to be a pretty good choice because the prince is going to be able to pummel that and then it also tanks for the wall breakers. He tornadoed the wall breakers closer to the tower too, so we got more damage. <laughs> oh, he's like, oops. Yeah, I feel like that uh, is definitely deserving of an oops. I'm going to go in for an ice spirit here so it can tank for our phoenix. If we get another archer queen out of our opponent, it's okay because we can go in for either a poison or a mega knight. Also, I'm sure you guys noticed this at the very start of the draft, but as soon as he chose lightning, I was like, I don't really want to drop a building to go encounter hog rider. Because if I do, then it's just going to get lightning. The mega knight, it stays alive though if you lightning it. Lightning is also one of the most underrated spells in the entire game in this draft mode, because it does really, really, really well into opponents that are going to be using buildings or any type of distractions for hog riders, royal giants, golems. It works with almost every deck, so I think that Lightning is criminally underrated as a spell. If you don't choose that early on, I think that Poison, Fireball, and then spells that are pretty valuable no matter what type of deck you're playing are good, but Lightning works in a lot of big beatdown decks if you want to use it. So, what do we do? Do we go in for a Phoenix here on top of all of his units and then just clog up the river and make sure nothing happens? Also, Phoenix just doesn't get hit by the Sparky, so that's one of the best benefits of using it. I'm going to go in for a Miner in the back. I think the Hog Rider will give him one more hit, maybe. Oh, it doesn't. Wow, that's fantastic. Get a Tornado. That's totally fine for me. I can just go in for a Mega Knight again on top of the Archer Queen if we need to. But yeah, Phoenix is so fun. The <laughs> fact that it revived there is ridiculous. We're going to go in for a Mega Knight on top of all of his stuff. He's trying to bait out my Elixir so then he can go in for a Hog Rider. But because the Mega Knight is able to clog up the Hog for a while, we can probably just defend everything with a Prince and an Ice Spirit without much damage. And then I can go in for a Miner here. This guy seems probably like an Ultimate Champion player by the way he's played. Like, he's played this really well setting up offenses, but it doesn't really matter. GG and well played, man. We are going to go crush you and break you down with our Breakers. Very fun game, and it shows you the importance of building a good draft composition. If we had built a deck with a building, we would have gotten completely finessed by this man's Hog Rider Lightning deck. But instead, our Mega Knight jumped us to new heights of value. All right, so unfortunately, it's our opponent's turn. We do have Miner and Poison in the pool, so he can't pick both of them. What is he going to have? Oh, let's go. There's Monk as well, the best champion to pick at all points. Also, Mighty Miner is a close second, so we'll see what he's going to snag. He chooses Poison. Fortunately for us, we do have Fireball as a potential choice as well. Ooh, wait. There are no arrows, and there are no ways of killing Firecrackers or Princesses effectively. 
So I'm 100% choosing the firecracker and probably the princess, depending on what he has. I wonder if he realizes how bad this is going to be for him if I stack up so many princesses and firecrackers. No, he's smart. Why does he have to be an intelligent person? I don't appreciate this behavior, my man. Okay. Well, we can go and choose Monk because it's going to be able to reflect back all of the princess shots. So that's going to be pretty nice. You can also maybe go and choose Skeletons here for a faster card cycle because you have Barbrill. The goblins aren't going to go and yield us too much of a benefit. What else are you going to have, my man? So it seems like we are actually fighting a match against a fast cycle player that is also pretty intelligent. If he chooses Cannon, then it's going to get destroyed by the Monk. So that's good for me. I want to choose Fireball so I can guarantee finish off his Royal Hogs if he chooses that as the win condition. But I'm not going to choose Fireball until one of my last cards because he's not going to choose Fireball plus Poison in the same deck, right? So it'd be stupid for me to showcase my true intentions of how I want to play the game. I'm going to go and snag a Snowball here and then see if I want to drop like a Skeleton Barrel as well with Miner. I don't think that that's that bad, right? We could go in for Skeleton Barrel, Goblin Barrel with Miner and Fast Cycle because he's only going to have Bar Barrel. I think that's good. I think that's really good. Not bad at all, right? The super fast card cycle with Monk, Miner, Firecracker, Skeletons. This is going to be a fun game. I'm stoked for this, actually. There's no way he's going to build a big beatdown deck, so I think it would just be better for me to run fast cycle cards in general. And he's going to go Bandit. I gets fully cannibalized by Skeletons. That's good for me overall. I mean, this is, this is good vibes all around. No! He's ruining it! He just ruined it. This is why we can't have nice things. Oh, see, when your opponent knows what you're going to do, it's not ideal. It's not a vibe. I'm going to snag guards here because he can't end up killing them with the bar brill. It's going to be a good choice for me. And then we're going to go and round out our deck with a fireball. So very smart choice for him to take away the goblin barrel last choice. I think we forced him into that, to be honest. I don't know if he really wanted to pick that. I think he probably wanted to pick like rail hogs or maybe go and choose something else like recruits. Maybe I don't know. That's good for us, though. So, his last card. He's going to go and choose the Mighty Miner. All right. I love his banner, by the way. This guy is definitely a top-tier player. As we rush up the leagues, players we're going to be playing against are better and better every time. We know that he's going to have Poison for our Firecracker. That's going to be his best bet. Snowball should be able to fully counter this Goblin Barrel if we timed it correctly. And we did. Let's go. No damage as well. Fantastic. So, we're going to go for a Miner and a Skeleton Barrel because we want the Skeleton Barrel tanking for the Miner so the Miner can do extra damage. And even after the nerf, Miner is still the best win condition in this game mode by far. We're going to show you the proper Skeleton's placement to fully counter the Bandit if we need to. Uh, what is he going to do? His Bar Barrel doesn't extend far enough. So, I think we can just go in for our Skeletons here and be very content and happy with our life. And then Fireball on the Princess. So, what else do we do? Do we do anything else? Are we chilling? Oh, the Bandit did get a touch. I guess I should have dropped it a little bit later, a little bit lower. My bad. Yeah, usually the Bandit doesn't get a single hit on my tower there. He's going to go for Mighty Miner. The good thing about Mighty Miner into Monk is the Monk shoots back the Mighty Miner with his little fist. Just punches it back. So, the Mighty Miner is like, yo, I'm going to ramp up all this damage. And he just doesn't get it. Watch it. He's just dead again. <laughs> He poisoned as well, so that means he has no answer to the Firecracker. So if we can Firecracker with a Monk protecting him, that would be fantastic. So the Monk is one of the best win conditions in the game, in this type of game mode, because it works with every win condition. It works with Royal Giant, because it reflects back the buildings. It works fantastically with your opponent deciding to go in for, like, Ram Rider counters with, like, Cannon or whatever. By the way, we did our Cannon placement, or our Skeleton placement correctly there to fully shut down the Bandit. We got our Redemption Arc. But yeah, Monk is just so good at just tanking for an extra period of time so your win conditions can get more value. Like my Miner there got a lot more damage because of the Monk, right? It's just really cool to have that benefit. And it finishes off air cards like Minions, Magic Archers, Musketeers. It's just universally the best champion to pick in this type of game mode where you want to get more utility out of your units. Wait, he just dropped his cannon in the back to go and counter my Miner. How is he expecting to counter a Skeleton Barrel right now with a Monk? This is going to be awesome. Wait, the monk just blasted his Mighty Miner back so it can lock onto the tower. <laughs> Our deck is so much more toxic than yours. This is awesome. You can go for a Firecracker here. You're going to go for a Goblin Barrel. This time we're going to have to Fireball it, unfortunately. I don't really have any other play available for myself. If you think about it, but I decided to go in for a Snowball. It wouldn't fully counter it because the Goblin Barrel was getting tanked for. That was a very smart decision. I also like his choice of using Goblin Barrel when I didn't have any reliable way of countering the Goblin Barrel for a good Elixir train because there wasn't a Log or a Barbarian Barrel for me to choose from because he already chose the Barb Barrel, right? So that was a very smart choice from our opponent. I like playing against good people because just, you know, test my wits a little bit more and it makes me play my best in this Mega Draft. 
I'm gonna go for skeletons here, so then hopefully the bandit locks onto that. And look at how I'm stacking up firecrackers. As I said before, it's tremendously difficult to counter firecracker if you don't have arrows or a log, and he didn't have either of those. So that's why I identified the pool of cards, and I chose exactly what we wanted. Now we can go for a monk at the river, and you can finish off games with the Mr. Monk Man as well. So we're gonna go and send him to the Shadow Realm with a monk meditation. A peaceful way and a fitting end for our friend. GG and well played as we ripped his towers to pieces with a fireball and monk ability. This deck was super satisfying to play. The one thing that I love about this game mode is you get to play so many different cards and you get to revisit interactions that you might not have played in a while. For instance, I typically run goblins in almost all my decks over skeletons and I hadn't practiced the skeletons placement versus bandit. We messed up the first time, but we got redemption in the second part for a plus two elixir advantage. Mega draft takes a ton of skill because you have to memorize the most optimal placements with a ton of different cards. I would love if they added this game mode as a second Path of Legends ranked mode in addition to the regular ladder. So unfortunately, our opponent was given the first pick and he snags arrows. Doesn't really seem like there's any good big spells in this meta. So I'm going to go and snag the monk early just because I want to go and pick Executioner Tornado. So then he's not able to reflect back our Executioner and we can snag a lot of ranged cards that are going to be extremely valuable for us. So what is he going to do? I mean, he's going to choose arrows. We can't really reflect those back very well. He's going to choose Mighty Miner early as well. I disagree with that. You could have waited a while with the second champion pick because I can't pick another champion unless he doesn't want to show too much of his strategy early on. Oh, I forgot there was Miner in the corner. Sometimes you don't get to see all the cards if you're like not able to look at it really closely. So just something to keep in mind. Look at every single card picked because I should have chosen the Miner a little bit earlier than that. So, I would like Executioner. I don't think he's going to choose that. I want to go in for Skeletons for a faster card cycle here. And then I could also pick Fire Spirit because it counters Goblins for a plus one trade. That's going to be a really good choice for me. So, what else do I want? Do I want to choose anything coupled with the Miner? I could choose Wall Breakers, and that would be one of the best win conditions paired with Miner. Especially since he has Inferno Tower. That precludes any potential of me getting value with any big beatdown deck. So I want to choose Goblin Drill or I would want to choose Wall Breakers here. I kind of want Wall Breakers because it's a lot better. No! He finessed me. All right. I guess I can choose Recruits as well because he has Inferno Tower and that doesn't do so well into Recruits, right? We stockpile a lot of spam on both sides. The Inferno Tower is like, wait, I do really well against Golems. Not so well against you guys. Also pick up Princess if we want to. I think that wouldn't be a bad option because we can stack up a lot of those, make sure he can't finish them off very easily, especially since he's going to be using log most of the time on the recruits. I think that could be really good. I was hoping that we would be able to get a better card cycle here with our wall breakers, but I think I want to choose rail ghost as well. Yeah, rail ghost is going to be a really good element for us. Or, yes, yeah, I think I just want to choose rail ghost. We want to pair tornado with something here. Tornado will be good with Executioner for sure. We can line it up closer to towers. It works really well with Princesses. I kind of want to choose Fire Spirit just for a faster card cycle over the Executioner. And the Tornado will just be there for Princesses and a faster card cycle. And then also activating King Tower with Wall Breakers and then against his Goblins as well. So not that bad for us overall. He's going to choose Goblin Drill. Fine for me. We're going to spam recruits and eventually become successful. So it's really important to not choose your building as you saw this guy did at the start of this draft because if you choose your Inferno Tower, I can just build a win condition deck that is not going to be countered by that. And you have a dead five elixir cost card in your deck. Whereas the rest of my cards, you know, all eight of my cards are going to be valuable for me. I can go in for a Rail Ghost here. His Hunter isn't going to give him too much value. Remember, he's got Goblin Drill, so I want to save our Monk for that ideally. The Fire Spirit off to the side so then we can finish off the Hunter without it being able to kill our Princess. And then I can go in for the Monk here in the middle. Monk him in the middle to solve the riddle against the Mega Knight. Whenever the Mega Knight jumps, we should be able to go for Recruits afterwards so then it doesn't get that excessive amount of splash damage that he's hoping for. We'll probably have to go and pop the Mighty Miner ability to disintegrate the Royal Recruit Shields. If he doesn't, I think that would be a massive waste for my man. I'm going to go in for a Miner here so then the Recruits are going to be tagged for for a little bit longer. And even if he goes in for Arrows plus Goblins, as you guys can see, it doesn't finish it off. We can go for Skeletons here. I'm going to go and click the Monk ability so then it can still stay in front of the Recruit and give us a little bit of an extra offense. The longer that the Monk stays alive, the longer our push will thrive. And we are up an exponential amount of damage in the right-hand side. That is crazy, baby. Let's go. I love it. <laughs> you know you guys are probably like, Jake, fill me in. 1,000 damage lead on both sides. But when you've got Recruits, that stuff adds up real fast. 
Fire Spirit Eye on top of the Hunter again to fully counter it with the Princess. And I expect him to Mighty Miner, and then we just go Recruits again and make him pop the ability a little bit faster than he would want. Fortunately for us, even if he goes and pops the ability and goes the other side, it's immediately yeeted and deleted. We know he's going to go for Goblin, so I'm going to go for Royal Ghost immediately. And then I can go in for a Miner as well if I want to. Do I Miner? Oh my gosh, the Recruits are going to be tanking. So the Inferno Tower doesn't lock onto the Royal Ghost. That's awesome, dude. Royalty is working in tandem together. So... Again, I can go in for Miner. Generally, saving your Skeletons for Wall Breakers is the best bet. If you have Fire Spirit and you also end up having Skeletons, Wall Breakers are never really going to be breaking through. Even if they split it, you can split up your Skeletons and be okay. But yeah, we're just going to do this. Drop two Elixir on top of his two Elixir. Even if he goes in for Arrows, I think he only gets one connection. <laughs> so he spent a ridiculous amount of Elixir to get one Wall Breaker connection on my tower, which was also underleveled, by the way. So important to have properly leveled cards in this game mode. Really wish, again, that it was all level 11 for everyone standardized, but maybe they'll do that again in the future if they integrate this game mode into uh, ranked. At least that's what I'll be advocating for. So we can go in for a princess, and then I guess double princesses are going to be fantastic because it's going to be harder for him to snag decent value with his Mega Knight here. We can go in for our Royal Recruits after he decides to go in for the Mega Knight. He's just going to go and jump onto Skeletons instead of hitting anything of value. And then it's going to go and jump on the other side, <laughs> which is completely away from us. And if it went a little bit longer, what I would have done is I would have tornadoed the Mega Knight into the King Tower. So I can go in for a Princess here, tornado all of his units a little bit closer to his tower. Hopefully the Princess hits the Hunter and then also finishes off the tower. I think that's what's going to happen. I think the Princess wins us the game. Let's go! So Princess, an alternative win condition that most people wouldn't expect. He literally had an Inferno Tower and units body blocking, but that doesn't stop the Princess plus Tornado card combination. But generally, Tornado with Executioner and Magic Archers and Bowlers are way more effective. That just shows you the power of Tornado in this game mode. It works with almost anything. As you line up units near your opponent's tower, the splash damage will line you up a lot of wins. Like if you enjoyed today's video, subscribe for more daily content, and I hope you have an incredible rest of your day.